you don't have to be perfect right at the very beginning, right? So be willing to make the mistakes, be open to make the mistakes because you're, that's the only way you're really gonna grow. Where I think that some agents who come in and take it too seriously, they wanna be perfect right off the bat. And so they actually hold themselves back and they won't actually make any moves because they need to be perfect. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all right, we'll start off with you. <clears throat> Questions? Oh, uh, yes, sir. One question that I always ask myself after a call is, did I bring enough value to that phone call? Um, so I guess one of my questions is, how can I know that I bring value to the call? So coming from the customer service rep role, you primarily are dealing with outbounds, right? Is that correct? Or is it uh, inbounds? Mainly outbounds. Like mainly the, outbounds. The transfers that we get come from outbound dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. cool. So if we, if we kind of just look at that and analyze that in a perspective, what you're doing is you're giving uh, the general public um, courtesy updates, is what I like to call them, mm -hmm. right? Whereas the traditional telemarketing role may be like, hey, this is Daniel with New American Funding. How are you today? Right? Like that might be kind of a, just a general opening. But you don't want to do that because you're triggering a certain um, emotion within them where they're like, oh, fuck, it's a telemarketing call. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you have to keep the vibe of almost like you were meant to contact them. That's very powerful versus the traditional route of saying, hey, how are you today? You actually want to drive the conversation. So if I were telemarketing today, I'd be like, um, hey, Kevin, this is Daniel, New American. Hey, uh, quick, just quick confirmation. I'm actually sending you over a quick courtesy notice. It's headed out to your email. Do you guys have their email address? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So it's actually headed out to your email address. I'm going to send it to you regarding your property on MyFert. It's actually on its way. Just want to give you a quick heads up. We have a huge presence within the Orange County area, whatever the county is. And uh, these courtesy updates are really just to kind of keep you updated with all the new developments that's taken place in 2019. So it's on its way. Whether you use it or not, it's completely up to you. Just need to confirm, is this email still valid? Yes. Okay, perfect. Hey, well, I got you on the phone before I send it over. Your property on MyFord, this is still your primary, right? And then you can move in to the application. Does that make uh, sense? Yeah, yeah. And then transfer and say, hey, you know what? Let's do this. I have an idea. I have one of a senior, I have a senior uh, loan officer that can actually put a little bit more detailed information to you so it's not so generic and it'll actually be worth your time. Let me connect them real quick, okay? That's a very fast transfer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a little bit wow. different than what you would use, right? Definitely yeah, not right. basic. It's right. as if you it's like, meant. personalized it. Yeah. Yes. It's yes. just depending on the context to the call because obviously with us, we're trying to extract that information and then towards the end, whenever you're, let me get my senior loan officer, that comes in our position after we've already extracted information, gotten documents and everything like that. So. It, Oh, I, you're getting documents. I pull, I'm yeah. taking what oh, you just said right packages. there, and then you, you like send it to underwriting. Certain points of that call is what you just said. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so that that I just wanted to kind of throw that out sure. there. We're we're in the process of like we receive the docs, we submit it to we cal income calculations, and then we send it off to the. CMO oh, officer. got it. Okay, yeah. now I have a better context. I'm thinking you guys just transfer it straight to loan officers. We just do purchase. Okay, yeah, cool. So it's just straight strictly purchases, yeah. right? Yeah. And so you're outbounding people, um, and I think it's really important to understand the um, kind of the the premise of the lead. So I know you're outbounding, but at some point we have to understand, did they do an online inquiry about purchase? Mm -hmm. And let me do just a little yep. bit more. So yep. C CSRs get the call, they do the outbound, and then they ask the, the, pre the preview questions, bankruptcies, foreclosures, okay, great. Then they send it to us, and, we and then it. we are acting like an LO Got it. in a sense, but they don't, they don't know that until, unless we voice that to them and explain, we're not licensed, we can't give you rates. Got it. So we act as LO for however long it takes to get everything we need. And then we go, perfect, you know, let me give you my senior loan officer. We'll be able to give you detailed information. Got it. All right, so after this meeting, I'm going to hook you guys up with um, this script that I have in one of my courses. And it's actually meant for purchase agents. And it's going to be in line with kind of what you guys do. But so, so, in, so to answer your question, right, how do I know if I delivered them enough value? The whole premise of your engagement and say the reason why they're transferring you over to me is because I'm going to help protect your time and ensure that you get what is called a pre-approval letter. This has a little bit more weight than a pre-qualification 
because it confirms that the houses you look at, you can afford. So it's a little bit unique versus what you can get with most companies because I'm actually located at our corporate office. So we're where all the underwriters are. So I can get this pretty fast in comparison to most net branches or retail branches that are outside. And this is typically while they'll give you what's called a pre-qualification. We operate a little bit different here because we service the loan and we're the direct connection to the source, like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, VA, FHA. We have a little bit more weight with them because of our size. And that relationship is really what you use me for. Does that make sense? So that's where they believe they're bringing, they're, they're obtaining value. And so from your standpoint, how you're looking at it is you, you, want, to, you want to help them, right? It's not a matter of, hey, can I get your steps? Man, I need a, I need a point on the board. Okay. It's more of kind of taking an initiative to say, hey, man, I'm going to help you save a bunch of time. And that's how they need to feel, right? I'm going to help you save um, heartache, right? Protect your earnest money deposit. Things that, um, that they feel from an emotional standpoint from, this, from the place that they're in right now. Because if we, if we use empathy and we, say, and we actually look, we actually kind of see it from their, their side of the table, they, they don't know what to expect, right? They don't know what to do. Um, they're kind of nervous, but they're excited. And they're gonna ask questions that they don't even know are actual questions yet, right? Like, how much, how much can I afford, All right? Like, um, if you're asking them, like, hey, how much do you want to get uh, approved for? That's, pr that's probably like a dead-end question, right? Like, mm -hmm. you should, should actually drive the conversation and say, hey, I'm going to save you a ton of time. I'm going to actually tell you exactly what you qualify for, right? So it's almost asserting that this is how it's going to go. And you having that kind of authority in your voice, you wouldn't necessarily need to explain why you're not the licensed loan officer. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Exactly. Yeah. And, and think of it as like where everyone, like if you, you know, throughout life, uh, if you think about the idea of going to school and graduating, you have to go through milestones, right? First grade, second grade, third grade. Um, when you go like to a loan officer, you have to go through milestones, like CSR, senior CSR, junior, SR, right? So we are naturally evolved in this way. We are wired this way. And so if you use that ideology and you kind of relay it through the way you communicate, you can communicate with them in a way and say, hey, in order to get to, you know, DEF, you need to go ABC first. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So now the question is, well, how do, I, how do I explain the path to them? Do I explain A, B, and C? You always start with the, with the bigger prize in mind. Right, and so you come in with the notion of saying, "Hey, this is where we're going to go. This is how it's going to protect you, but this is what we got to do first. Whereas most will say, "Okay, well, we're going to do A, B, C. We're going to, you know, you do go straight into detail, and then you explain what what the purpose is for." But the problem with that is, is that if they don't like the minutia of the A, B, and C, they're not going to be bought into whatever comes after. Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And so I think that the, the tonality of it all, like when you're dealing with the tonality, you know, and I'd like to hear some of your guys' uh, common objections and maybe roadblocks that you guys are running into, and then um, see if I can offer any assistance that way, okay? Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. All yes, right. Thank you. Yeah, cool.